everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we will take a look at my straight six Lego vacuum engine. As you can see I have all clear cylinder walls on it and so it should make for a great show for you. Now before we get started I'm going to do a brief overview and then at the very end of the video I'm going to do an in-depth look. So for those who are interested in a full explanation please wait till the end of the video. And for those who just want to see some action, give me about 30 seconds to a minute and I will have it running for y'all. But uh, anyways, we're going to run it just straight into the intake, no throttle. As you saw in my previous video, on my short, you saw this throttle. Um, it's a good throttle. As you can see, I have a gasket on it. But uh, for today's video, I think I would just rather run it on the intake, get some red lines for y'all, and then, uh, yeah, we'll skip on. It's the last time you will see this engine, though, I am going to be making a V6 with the parts in, used in this engine. So, uh, yeah, wish me luck, and uh, let's get to running this thing. Now we will get a RPM reading of it. Now this, take in mind, this is with a larger flywheel, but my test, my original test, gave results at about 1500 RPM, something like that. But that was with a smaller flywheel, like I said. So we might get mixed results. So let me install the uh, piece of tachometer tape, and then we will take a reading. So as you can see, we are averaging out at about 1600 to 1800 RPMs. I think we might have had a couple peaks to where it got to 2000 RPM. However, my tachometer can, some, I think it sometimes read reflections off of these other parts, which can skew the results, which is why you saw 
when I lowered the throttle, it went up to 2,000. Which, so that is something with my tachometer that I haven't figured out yet. If you have any ideas, leave a comment down below, and I'm going to look into it. Because I do not quite know why my tachometer does that, but I can tell you that 1,600 to 1,800 RPM is pretty accurate for this engine. It is not meant to redline, but so high, I mean... It's meant for torque. As you can see, I could barely stop it with my fingers in part of that video. And when I do, it really burns my fingers pretty bad. It's really, really hot. So, if I could figure out how to make the valve travel at a 120 degree angle, I will try to remake this engine with the 120 degree offsets as a true inline six should have. But uh, yeah, I'll probably take, take the valves and all that pistons and all that stuff off of here and attempt a V6. So please wish me luck. And uh, yeah, I guess this will be going into the in-depth overview now. So basically got a really large flywheel on here, very, very large, but it does help to smooth out this engine. As you can see, it's a very, very, very smooth engine. You can even hear that it's not really scraping or anything. And that is because I am fortunate to have all of these clear cylinder walls that are smooth. So I had a huge load of those from, from Bricklink. Great place to shop. Not sponsored, obviously. So I would, but I would recommend. I did not have any issues with them. So yeah, if you're ever looking for parts or you want to know where I where I get all my parts from, I am starting to purchase from Bricklink a lot more. So I highly recommend those or uh, that company. So. Yeah, there I used this small wheel for the tachometer tape. Works pretty good. Um, obviously, like I said, it's a six cylinder. You very obviously see that. But these two in the middle fire at one time, and then the end two fire at one time, and then these two go at their own paces. So, we got the timing chain. As you can see, it's covered up by this flywheel. By the way, if anybody's wondering why I have this flywheel over here, it smooths out the entire engine. Like, you wouldn't believe it, but this little tiny flywheel, I think what it's doing is eliminating something called crankshaft warp, which is where there's such a long crankshaft, which the crankshaft is the shaft going through the center of the block that connects all of the pistons together. And... This right here helps to keep the inertia on this end going while this flywheel is helping to keep this end going. Keep this end right here going. That's kind of how it works. So basically you don't have the lag because as you can see, if I hold this one sturdy, you can see that it still moves. That's warping the crankshaft right there. And so having this flywheel over here helps to smooth out the whole process. But uh, anyways, I have these beams right here to hold the manifold straight, otherwise it can put pressure on the valves which will decrease the speed significantly. I do not have a gasket on the um, intake manifold just for those who are wondering. I do not have any kind of gasket on here, but it seals pretty well on its own. I use a four wide intake path, so give me one second and I'll take the top off the intake and show you the intake for those who are interested. Quick side note, as you can see I use pins to hold in the manifold. All of these blocks right here have pins when they're actually holding it on. This one does not. I, don't have not, I do not have that many pins nor is there a place to connect them. But for these right here, all of these holes in the middle, they are always filled with pins. So as you can see over here, we have pins that hold it in place and as you can see the whole valve train. It's a pretty cool looking engine without the manifold in my opinion. But uh, yeah, you can see I have these blocks right here to time the, the uh, valves perfectly. Works very well. I recommend tuning your valves. Very, very fortunate to have done that or uh, thought of doing that. So I would definitely recommend doing that if you're ever trying to get max performance. I would always tinker around with your valves and definitely try different intakes. Try see what works best. Now, I was a skeptic to making a larger intake manifold this, like this wide. Here, let me finish putting it back together so you can see it. But as you can see, the runners on the inside are four studs wide, and it goes the whole length of it. I do not have the um, flat pieces on here because I didn't quite have enough. 
but it doesn't matter too much. It's generally pretty good. But as you can see, it's four studs wide, and so it goes through the entire manifold. And I was a skeptic to doing that. I didn't. I thought that it would make a lot more area inside the manifold, and so the vacuum would have to fill up all of this manifold. But it actually did the opposite. It worked very well. And since it's going straight into into the runners right here, which these are the runners where it goes into the valve, it goes straight into there. Works perfectly. So as you can see, it's a really good, um, really good manifold. It goes very very fast. And when it's closed off, it definitely decreases performance. So I definitely recommend having it open, more open like this. I did that with my V twin over here. Okay. I'm going to do a video on this soon, but I have a very large intake on it. Definitely recommend a large intake. But, uh, yeah, that's the intake, four studs wide, as you can see right there. That's where the vacuum attaches. But uh, yeah, works very well. Um, if you, if any of you all ever use any of these techniques, please credit me. And to give proper credit to the manifold, who told me to. Have it four studs wide like this was Matt's Bricks. Many of y'all may know him as the person who made one of the fastest overhead valve engines that I know of at least. And he was told me through the DMs on the Discord about making it four studs wide that it would improve efficiency. And he was definitely right. Very, very correct. Because I didn't I don't really like experimenting with manifolds, they're very complicated for me. And I just kind of want to finish it and be done with it. But, uh, yeah. He was definitely very big and supporter of me doing that. Um, you can see his typical bearing block holding the flywheel on. And, as you can see, a giant flywheel. Very massive flywheel. With a thick, very, very thick bike tire. So, that's what gives it so much power. In terms of torque, it doesn't want to stop because of that. As you can see, I have KF Plus's axle locker on there. Works very well. Except, since my wall isn't very large, it pulls the whole wall out, which tells you something. <laughs> so, anyways, I'll probably start the teardown of this right now. But, and as I explain everything, but, as you can see, you got all the valves over here, they're all the, got that one by one hole in it modification. But, uh, which is also KF Plus's idea, I guess. But, um, yeah, as you can see, it ran very, very well. Very good engine. Uh, I did use something that was my own idea, and I guess I'll explain the theory in it. Or, uh, explain what the theory behind this is. But, as you can see right here on the cylinder head, this is the cylinder head for these right here. It uses these pieces right here. These slopes give it higher compression. Uh, I know what you're saying though. Like your vacuum engines don't need compression, right? They don't need to compress a fuel air mixture. True, although what these do is they make it where there's less volume in the cylinder. Quote, unused volume in the cylinder for the vacuum to have to displace. So instead, with putting these in there, it can put more pressure on the piston faster, so it'll pull it up faster, as well as give it more torque because it doesn't have to displace all that area. It's putting more pressure on that piston. So I did that with all of these, all six of the cylinders. Worked very, very well. Um, I don't want this video to be too long and just be a run on, <clears throat> but since I am taking this engine apart, I would like for you to know my uh, thoughts on this and what I did to make it super fast, stuff like that, as well as for my own resource, so that way when I do go to rebuild this engine, because like I said, I do plan to make this again, depending on how well the V6 goes. If the V6 fails, then I will definitely rebuild this engine, because it's definitely my favorite engine so far, but um, I will be taking apart my torque engine, that 2x2, two two, or uh, not 2x2, two two, this two-cylinder torque engine that has a six-stud stroke and he was really really fast with six by six pistons i'm taking that one apart i'm not doing a full video on that one because it's not really that valuable for a video it's mostly just a very very cool engine easy to replicate so 
I already have a video of that now. You can check out that short that I made. But, um, yeah, it was a good engine, but I just I need the parts for the V6, but I think the V6 will be much more worth it. Not sure about how much torque it'll have, but it'll be more worth it, I'm sure. Of course, next video you'll see V6 failed or something, and then I'll be saying, oh, it wasn't worth it, but we'll see. Wish me luck, and, uh, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this V6, or, uh, inline 6 while it lasted. I hope my next video will be about, or one of my next videos will be about a, v a V6, but I will say my next video will be about this big old V-Twin. As you can see, it's a very, very smooth V-Twin. Runs in exceptionally well. And, uh, yeah, like I said, use a giant intake. But, like I said, runs incredibly well. Uh, it uses a counterbalance crankshaft and all. So, we'll save that for the next video. So, this is a little sneak peek for you. For those who watched till the very end, which I'm sure not many of you did. So, I guess the uh, people that watched to the end get the reward. So, hope you all enjoyed this video. And I'll catch you in the next one. I'll let us out. See ya.